Hi, today we're going to do a little bit of photo editing. We have this uh, picture here of a pretty girl, and she has, as you can see, some nose jewelry and some tattoos. Um, what we're going to do just for the fun of it and to learn some tools is to, let's see if we can get rid of the nose rings and get rid of the tattoo. We'll let her keep that tattoo on her other arm because for now we're just going to work on these. Now she's a pretty girl and she doesn't really need to do anything but let's say this is for an ad or something and you want to have her without the earrings or a nose ring I guess. Uh, let's see how we, we might go about that. I'm going to copy this and paste it. That way I'll always have my original to remind me of what it looked like before. And I'm in Corel Draw, which um, I have said many times, the reason I like Corel Draw so much is because I can go back and forth between Draw and Photo Paint without changing programs. It just goes straight back and forth. It won't change the image size, the number of uh, the resolution, anything like that. I can just go back and forth and work on it in either program interchangeably. So I'm going to select the one on my right and I'm going to go to Edit Bitmap and that takes me directly to Photo Paint with the exact same image and now I can work on it with raster effects. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here. We'll start with her nose jewelry. We'll zoom kind of way in so we can see what we're doing and um, I'm going to use the clone tool now the clone tools up here right there and you can see my nib size is very small just for the heck of it I'll make it a little bit bigger so I can show you what the clone tool does if you're not familiar with it the clone tool takes a sample of one part of your image and transfers that to another part. So for instance, I'll go up here to her eye. Now you can see my target is on her eye and if I start drawing the clone, I can draw another eye wherever I want. Which is kind of cool. I mean, I don't want to do this. You can hear that double click. That's me slapping the uh, space bar. Double click on the space bar will turn your clone on and off. Okay, so now we're hit Control Z, which takes me back to where I was. Now the clone tool is uh, the nib size is way too big, so I'm going to change it up here to a two, two pixels, and now you can see my um, transparency clone tool as settings. I keep my transparency around here for most of my projects. The lower the transparency, the, the harder it's going to be to make it realistic because you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And I'm going to sample her nose. I'm going to zoom in even more. There. sample her nostril here and then start to work on that nose ring okay I'm not erasing it I am replacing the pixel color with the color of her nose to make it look like it's not there I'll do the same thing over here and you can see that the target moves along with your tool. So I can continue sampling. And we're zoomed way in, so it's going to look way uh, different than when you zoom out. But basically, I'm, I'm not going to work too hard on this. I'm going to go pretty quick because I don't want to make a long video. You might end up watching something else. But I'm sampling her skin, 
with the clone, and I am covering up the ring with her skin color. And a good idea with the clone is to keep it as close to what you're working on as you can so it doesn't look unrealistic when you're done because you want like you can see that skin has subtle light and dark areas get rid of the last of the earring here right there I might go back into her nose here just for a second and then come up here and do that I'm cloning away the uh, nose ring and replacing it with her skin color now what I almost always do after I'm done cloning is go over here to my smudge tool it's under my brush menu right there a little q-tip and if you smudge pixels it lowers the contrast between them so you see this hard edge here this this samples both pixels that you're clone that you're smudging and mixes them together a little bit so it's not uh, such a hard edge you can see a little bit of a ring left there so I'm going to go like that and smudge it a little bit more, get rid of any hard edge I see, including these up here. Then I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to say that that part right there looks fake. So I'm going to go back to my clone, see if I can get rid of that once and for all. There, now if I zoom out, I'm going to say that looks pretty realistic. I left that one earring there. But we got rid of her earrings. Or I keep saying earrings. It's because I'm old. We didn't have those when I was young. It's a nose ring. Okay, now to get rid of this tattoo, I'm going to use a mask. What a mask does is masks off part of your image so you can work on the other part without affecting the mask part. And the magic wand mask up here under my mask flyout. Its job is to detect different uh, contrast differences and find an edge. And it has tolerances. I've set this one at 22. A less tolerance will detect less edge. A more tolerance will detect more of a, an edge. It, the best way to learn how to use it is to experiment with it. So let's see how the 22 tolerance works. I'm going to just click here with my magic wand. You can see it finds the edge. Now if I hold down control, I can add more areas. You can see we got some of her hair up here, but we don't care because we're not working on that part of her right now. We're working on her arm. Um, so I'm going to go up here to mask again because you can see we've masked off her not the background so if we just invert the mask now we can work on her without affecting the background I'm going to do one more step here which is optional but you'll be happy if you do it uh, mask outline feather and there are different settings in here but I'm going to feather it by six pixels which gives a little bit of a blurred edge a feathered edge so it doesn't look so we don't end up with a sharp edge on our final once again i'm working on this as quickly as i can to make my points um, but i have my clone tool again and once again it's too small because i was zoomed in earlier change it to a 20 which is about right and i'll sample her arm color and just start getting rid of that uh, tattoo and since we're masked off I don't have to worry about 
going over the edge. I don't have to carefully trace it or anything. Um, so I'm just going to keep working here, get rid of all of it. Double click, go up here, work on that. Now here it's going to get a little tough because you see that piece of hair in there. So I'm, we don't want obviously to reproduce that. So I'll go down to a small nib size here. And I'll see if I can just get rid of I lost part of the hair. But anyway, that looks kind of fake right there because you can see she has a shadow and it transitions to a light. So I'm going to go back to my smudge tool. Once again, keep adjusting the transparencies or whatever. I'm going to smudge from top to bottom, which gives me a transition, gradual transition from that. dark shadow to a lighter skin tone so they don't have a hard edge. I'm going to do the same thing down here. Smudge once again will sample the color of the pixels and will sort of blend them a little bit together so that they are closer together than they would have been if you didn't smudge. And I'm going to say, you know what, I'm good enough here for the purpose I'm doing this. And I'm going to always, when you use a mask, before you get out of uh, photo paint, you want to remove the mask. And I'm going to say that's good enough for the video. When you work on something, you can work on it as hard as you want to make it as realistic as possible. It's going to ask if I want to save the changes, and yes, I do. And now I can see side by side what I've done. Looks a little bit unrealistic if someone were to be picking this apart. But for all intents and purposes, I've removed her nose jewelry and I've removed her tattoo. And if this is for an internet ad or a website or quick ad that somebody's going to look at for five seconds, this is going to be good enough. If it's for a high quality magazine or something you're going to want to work on a little bit harder but for now i'm going to say i'm done so now we've learned how to work with the clone tool and the smudge tool to retouch photographs uh, if you like the video i'd appreciate it if you'd click like um, or subscribe to my channel i'm going to try to do more videos now that i have a new microphone and i like the sound of my voice a little bit better keep practicing with your tools and I hope your next project goes well.